Welcome to the Altered Life Podcast, a show about the power of human connection, told in various forms from multiple sides. Join us for season one as your host, Michael Castanon, brings you along for conversations that each carry an important message and takeaway you can apply in your own life. You're about to hear part one of a conversation between Michael and Cole Dyer and his fiance, Samantha Colicchio. Cole Dyer is currently the executive director of the Mental Health Network for Northbound Treatment Services. His mission is to utilize his extensive experience in the behavioral health field to create innovative mental health and substance abuse programs that serve their clients in unique and lasting ways. Samantha Colicchio is currently the creative director at South Swell Digital Marketing. She is a prolific writer, and since graduating from NYU in 2011, she's made a name for herself through her work serving businesses, individuals, and production companies. The theme of this conversation is about the journey of mental health and how getting clarity through a diagnosis can help you learn how to deal with your condition and create an action plan for treatment. Samantha recently published an article in the Huffington Post regarding her diagnosis of relationship OCD, or ROCD. In the process of sharing her journey openly, she's positively impacted thousands of readers who finally have words to describe what they've been feeling. Samantha's fiance, Cole, is a mental health professional and sought to refer Samantha to trusted colleagues rather than engage in diagnosing his significant other. There are so many factors involved in the journey of mental health in our relationships, and getting clarity on what you're struggling with can help you, your partner, and possibly many others going through the same thing. Please don't forget to subscribe to this show on your favorite platform. Enjoy today's episode. So I wrote an article in, and it came out in February. Um, I was diagnosed with OCD in August, the, pre the previous August. And it's a particular subtype of OCD called relationship OCD that I personally had never heard of before I was diagnosed with it. Um, and so I, it was important to me that I get the word out about what it was because just the realization that I had this changed my life. And so I decided to write an article um, and pitch it to the Huffington Post so that more people could come to understand what this was um, and how to treat it because it's treated very differently than something like anxious attachment or, um, you know, borderline or something like that, that, that might be, um, confused for OCD. Do we know how many people, um, are suffering with relationship OCD? I think so. It's not, it's not in the DSM, but according to an expert, Shiva Rajay, um, whose book I read that like, totally helped me. She says that it's hundreds of thousands of people um, yeah. are every year are diagnosed with ROCD. Cole, I want to ask you, when did you first sort of pick up that maybe Samantha was, you know, dealing with uh, ROCD? So kind of from the beginning, we were in a long, long distance, more long distance relationship. So I didn't see indicators as much, but I knew you know, there was something that she was dealing with as I deal with my own thing. So I was just, I, I mainly just thought, oh, she's like me, you know, it's just like some <laughs> a little bit of neurotic, just like I am, you know, <laughs> got some uh, some attachment things just like I do, you know, um, and there was a lot of similarities, which indeed drove connection. But I think it was last May before she was diagnosed. I think we we were having some difficulties communicating. And I, I think I told her at one point. I was like, this sounds like OCD to me, you know, because um, I've seen it. I work in this world. He called it first. I did call it first. And, <laughs> but but as you know, being in a relationship, I have to take that hat completely off. I can offer suggestion and help and referrals, but that's it. I've learned my lesson lo a long time ago, you know. So I just, you know, I let it, I let it be. I let that lay where it was at and... And then soon enough, I think it was a couple months later, she was with, um, I had I had connected her with a friend of mine who got her a different therapist who was doing like somatic work. And then that somatic therapist, I think she can tell you that story, but that was, you know, a couple months later and yeah. And it all made sense, you know, once, once it, I, you know, the light came on in her and she's like, oh my goodness, like this is what it's been my whole life. and. 
you know, that's a relieving thing. If you know what something is, you can, you know, I, we, I see it all the time. Once somebody has a, can put a name to it, it's just like when somebody's sick with cancer or, you know, something like that. You know, it's like once you know what it is, you're relieved. You're like, oh, okay, this is this. I can treat this, you know, so. Samantha's article has had waves of impact on the internet as people finally have words to describe what they're feeling. Getting clarity in the form of a diagnosis can be a total game changer when it comes to your mental health. Seek professional help. A licensed professional can arrive at a diagnosis which will help create clarity. And from that clarity, you can create an action plan. Once you understand more about your condition, you can work with a licensed professional to create an action plan for treatment. But remember, you are not your diagnosis. Identifying your diagnosis gives you the knowledge to seek care, to grow and elevate beyond your condition. We'd love to hear from you. Please rate and review this show on your favorite platform and let us know what you think or if you have any suggestions for future episodes.